in the kitchen. We want to thank Discover Newport for bringing in Chef Brian from Joe's American Bistro. We've got a delicious dish that you can not only enjoy if you make it yourself based on the recipe here, but you can enjoy it on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve menu. Prefix. Okay, awesome. Can't wait for it. We love prefix menus. Yeah. We'll go into some more details sure. about that a little later on, too. Let's but for now, let's go over all these ingredients. We've got a full counter here. A lot of my friends tend to, like, really give me a hard time about how many things I put in dishes. But we basically have <laughs> filet of sole that we're going to stuff with crab meat. Yum. And we're going to do a traditional shallow poach with that, with a little bit of shallot butter and white wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to that, we have a white asparagus sauce that I'm going to show you here. It's basically based on a Colcannon sauce, which is white wine, heavy cream, whatever you're using, and potatoes. So the potatoes thicken it, um, but it's still a gluten-free application. Huh. And it's one of those what I call competency sauces where you want the gentlest to boil so you don't impart any color, so you wind up with a very bone white sauce. Interesting. That's a great tip right there. So we're going to put this all together, and then we're going to marry that up with a little bit of celery act mashed potatoes, which is just equal parts celery and potato, huh. and a winter salad. And we have a little bit of arugula, frise, fennel, dill, and chervil and then some marinated vegetables to go on top of that. It sounds delicious, and I love, like you said, a winter salad. You're really taking advantage of the seasons. That's what you did recently right. at the restaurant. We just flipped our menu, and as we were talking about, most of our proteins stay the same, whether it's the half chicken, mm -hmm. a uh, roasted piece of cod, but then we adjust everything that goes with it seasonally. That's great, so you can still get your favorite if you like how the chicken's right. done or the fish or whatever it might be. Now, why this sole here as per opposed to a different fish? Particularly the sole, it's very thin. It's a very small fillet. Mm -hmm. It's a two to four ounce fillet. So when you actually, and what I'll do in the next segment is wrap it around this crab meat mm -hmm. and it has a very even um, coverage. Okay. So it's the same thickness all around. It cooks evenly. Cooks evenly, as it perfect. Cooks, the, the crab meat comes together and with, you know comes up to temperature. Perfect. Okay, grab your sole and your crab, and we're going to be ready to go. We'll get things started in just a bit. And in the kitchen, Joe's American Bistro is the place, and you kind of teased to it earlier that we are going to start wrapping up that crab. Absolutely. So we've got a crab meat stuffing that's basically a little bit of shallot, fresh breadcrumb, cream, mm -hmm. and chervil. And what you're going to do with the sole, there's is a thicker... chervil? Yes. What is that? It's a funky, cool little herb that's like just completely to its own self. Okay. Um, it's got a light lemon, very perfumey kind of quality to it. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very interesting... Especially that it has lemon in it. It always works well with seafood. It's a great, It's a great seafood thing. So what we're doing sole. is basically taking these popiettes of sole, and you're going to start with the thin side with the crab meat stuffing closest to it mm -hmm. and roll it so what you get is a uniform covering and I noticed that you're meat. placing it down with the seam where it down. ends right. exactly to kind of seal that in. Right. And what that'll actually do is as the albumin and the protein of the fish cooks, mm -hmm. it'll help seal it that much more. So we've got just a little whole butter and shallot there, very traditional shallow poach method. Whole butter, white wine, never too much white wine. <laughs> We're going to bring that up to a gentle boil, Okay. cover it, put it in a 350-degree oven for about 8 to 10 minutes. Great. Now, with a lot of these very slow processes going on, we're definitely going to be relying on the magic of television to put this one together in the next segment. Which we do quite often, so right. that's fine. What do you have in this other pot Okay, here? so this is actually the white asparagus sauce, the cold can that I mentioned earlier. Yes. And this is the sauce simmering at this point. So you can see there's virtually very little heat going on there, mm -hmm. and you just want to get the potatoes tender enough to the point that when they do are completely cooked, you can put that in a blender, pass it through a sieve or the f basically the finest strainer you have. Okay. Um, and what you wind up with is a very, like, very delicate, very smooth sauce. And, and a, like a pure white yes, sauce, bone white. too. There's basically almost no agitation and no real boiling of this. It's barely moving mm -hmm. so that it doesn't impart any color to the, the cream or anything like that. And like I said before, it's like what I consider a competency sauce. Will that affect the flavor, too, if you start to jack up that temperature Absolutely. quite a bit? Absolutely. Any time you do that with things, you know, people are always like, I'm going to make mashed potatoes, like, full tilt. Right, and hurry. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, great, so now you're blowing the starch out, now they're absorbing water, now, you know, there's all these other things going on. Yeah. So it's those little nuances that can really affect what your final product is. I think I messed that up when I made mashed potatoes last nah, night. you're probably I started fine. to boil them and, okay, <laughs> well, now I'm going to rethink my process whenever I'm making anything. 
Make sure you maintain all that delicious flavor. We're gonna cover up this fish. Actually, we could probably do it now. Do that right there, and we're gonna go right in the oven, and that'll be ready to go when we come back. Okay, sounds good. Look at that, he just ended the segment for me, so stick around. <laughs> well, it is time to assemble our plate. Chef Brian is here from Joe's American Bistro. We wanna thank Discover Newport for bringing him back in. First of all, where is your restaurant located? 24 Memorial Boulevard West. So as you're coming out of downtown and heading towards First Beach, mm -hmm. we're right on the right-hand side. Perfect. Good location there. It is a and great spot. a great meal that you're making today, which can be found on a certain menu in particular. Right. We're going to have this on our prefix menu for New Year's Eve. Um, we're doing a traditional three course menu for $55. Um, but what we did was bring in some really high end, really awesome things to play with. I mean, like veal chop, Ooh. the sole, a surf and turf. Um, we're really going to have some fun with it. Nice. It's Does like it come the last one. Yes. Yeah. What, what are, we, are we talking? Creme brulee or uh, molten chocolate cake. Oh, my goodness. Just Can I like, both? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. All right, got to talk about the entree, first of all. Okay. Now, bring us up to speed. Okay. We we're making our, our sauce here. Right, we're making the white asparagus sauce, which mm -hmm. is based on a cold cannon sauce, which is potato, shallot, white wine, cream. Yep. Very, very little agitation, very little bubbling going on. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much white. And you're going to put that in a blender, and what you're going to wind up at the end is like a very, very bone white sauce. It looks beautiful. Um, so it kind of, it, it's got like, like silky elegance to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, a nice dish. Um, nice finish to a dish, I should say. Um, our sole popiates are coming out of the... Uh, oven in just a second okay. here. Okay, you put you started them on the stove though and then Correct. time and temp for the Time oven. and temp 350 for about 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, pretty quick. Um, yeah, it is relatively quick and a traditional shallow poach. Um, this is one of the things my cooks can attest to. Everything gets covered in parchment paper. Oh, why is that? Um, I have this thing about double protecting the fish itself. Huh. Um, so basically Especially like when people will cover something with like aluminum foil yeah. and you get that funky crust from the aluminum foil. Mm. It's like to me one of the grossest things ever. Well, good tip there. So the poach gets are going to come out. Now a lot of times with a traditional French shallow poach, this liquid would be reduced mm -hmm. and then made into a sauce a la minute. Oh wow. So It smells delicious. It's There's like caramelized onions, garlic cooking, mm -hmm. like white wine and butter poaching, you know, a fish kind of thing. Even just the smell of the fish itself, yeah. it doesn't smell fishy. That's always a good sign of a good piece of fish. Well, that's that's thanks to Foley Seafood. I will give them a plug because I mm -hmm. use them for everything and they do a great job. Nice to know. Now this is a celery mashed potato. It's basically equal parts celery mm -hmm. or celery root, as we were talking. Yes. Mashed potatoes and butter. And what I'm going to do is just put a nice little kind of mirror image of the sole there. It's so cool what you can do when it comes to plating. If you're cooking for a dinner party or even just like a special someone, you can put a mashed potato or something in a piping bag mm -hmm. and really kind of elevate what's elevate going on. Elevate your presentation, yeah. certainly. So this is a winter salad. Originally, this was going to be sorrel, among some other things. Mm -hmm. um, but I was unable to track it down. It took me three days to not find it. But that's all right, because sometimes you look for an ingredient, you can't find it. You just kind of go with what you got. Right. So we went with a, a little bit of arugula, frise, some dill, mm -hmm. fennel, and again, the chervil that's in the stuffing for the sole. Tie it all back together. A little bit of lemon vinaigrette. Mm. Nice light drizzle. And then what I'd done earlier was take some of the celery act, carrot, red pepper, and leek and marinated that in the same salad dressing. Oh, yum. So what we'll do is put our greens down. That brings a great pop of color to the plate. Because before it was very, you it's know, kind of Very monochromatic, monochromatic yeah. exactly. So then we'll come in with our vegetables. Wow, that's a beautiful plate. We came together so quickly. And a little bit of Father Christmas, some pomegranate seeds. Delicious. And then what we'll do is just simply finish this up with our sauce. Oh, yeah. Now, will the sauce go over just the fish? Just the for fish, this? yeah. Okay. So basically, untraditional traditional saucing method, you want to just completely, lightly cover it. Okay. And if you've got that nice, beautiful nappe consistency, it will coat. Mm -hmm. Without running off Without of running it. right off. Or not be like heavy, gloppy, thick. Mm -hmm. And traditional sauce consistency, if you can mark your finger through that and it holds. Oh, wow. Yeah, take a look at that. That's, okay. uh, that is a good that's test. A good, that's a good marker. That's when you know it's at the right consistency. Very nice there. Okay. All right. Well, this looks like a beautiful dish. Uh, where I'm going to try it in just a minute. But I want to remind you, too, that if you want this recipe, you know where to go, roadshow.com.